So thanks, thanks Will for joining and thanks everyone who's watching. My name is Daniel Fosco. I'm the senior product designer on the platform stream at Miro. More specifically, I work with the developer experience team that works on Mirotone and we currently released uh, Mirotone UI, which is what I'm gonna talk about today. So for those who don't know, Mirotone is the CSS component library that we have for building platform apps at Miro. So here's the documentation page. Um, and you can see that Mirotone offers you uh, both conceptual aspects of it. So variables, layout, uh, foundational parts like colors, typography, icons, and then the actual components, right? You have more complex stuff like app cards um, and, you know, the usual that you find in uh, CSS libraries like buttons, links, etc. And then if you scroll all the way down after templates, you'll see here in the resources, we have our design library or UI library. <clears throat> There's a small video here that, that shows some of the stuff that, that I'm gonna talk about. Um, but yeah, we've, we've had some updates since then. So if you click on this link, it will take you to the Figma community. Um, and the, the library is essentially a Figma file that you copy to your, to your Figma account and you can work on it and, and design apps, uh, using those same components from Mirotone in Figma. Right. Uh, so I'm going to click get a copy and then it will add as a draft. All right. And then you see that, uh, this approach is necessary because even though Figma, um, you can publish libraries internally in your own Figma account, but not externally. Right. So this was the way that we found to share our library, um, with any Figma user, not, not necessarily in the Miro organization. Um, and then there's two ways you can use this, this file. Uh, the recommended way is to use, use the file as a starting point for your designs. So you have this, this page that has just like the, the Miratone CSS documentation, it has all the colors, it has all the icons, the typography, and down here you can find the components. It doesn't have all of the components on the CSS yet. Um, but we're, we're working to have a one-to-one -one mapping. So all the components you can get on the code, you also can get on the design and vice versa. Um, but with the components here, you have a second page that says your app here, right? So you can, for example, just come in here, get maybe an app panel and then use it to, to jumpstart your, your app development. You can get a button and then just paste it in there and start working on it. If you need to, to add some text, you see that it already starts in a default value that, that follows uh, Miratone's uh, styles, but then you can change to any other style, right? You can make it smaller, you can make it larger. And, and so does the colors, right? They also map to everything that we have in the CSS library. So any of the blues or, or the indigo colors that our CSS components use, you also have available here. Um, and this specifically is one of the advantages of using the actual file from, from the library as, as your starting point, because it will give you all of these color styles and all of these typography styles. You could just create a new Figma file and then copy stuff from here, uh, which is more than fine. But then the, 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 these kinds of styles won't move over to your new file. So it's up to you. You can, you can do it either way, but this is one way you found to try to make it easier for, for our users. Um, and then from here, I think I'm going to show, show an example of, of how to use this, right? Uh, this is the same file. It's just with a different name, but let's go here. So let's get the Google images app that we have published. And let's try to quickly recreate it using the components we have available. Um, all right, so let's go with the app panel. Get a new one here. Here we can go for Google Images. 
then an input field yes this one maybe yeah this one so a focused field And then for those who, who never used Figma before, um, Figma has, has evolved a lot in recent years, and they have a very interesting feature called Auto Layout. And Auto Layout will essentially uh, replicate the behavior of CSS and Flexbox to some extent. So for example, if you have a frame, I just added Auto Layout to it, and it will help me automatically position my my elements on within the the frame so you see here that this input is centered because it added the paddings necessary to keep it centered because that's where it was already so let's change this to zero and then we'll go all the way up let's make this bigger again um and then here on the input we can change it to fill container And here as well, fuel container. Doesn't always work, but works most of the time. So here around the app body, we can add some padding. Uh, my think my skills are not cooperating that much today. So let's just forget auto layout and just reposition it a little bit. All right. <coughs> and the other thing it's very useful for auto layout is to create grids, right? So what we can do is we can create a frame with this rectangle. Uh, then we create two rectangles inside the frame. So copy and paste in here inside the same frame and then when we apply auto layout to it we have these two here so let's make it make them both bigger and then centralize them here can make them match the input size. All right, so you see here in the middle, it sets the spacing between the items. So we can make it a little bit bigger. And then here we can also make it 16. So we duplicate this and we turn both into a frame as well with a spacing of 16. So you start building the grid that you have here, right? And you could put the images individually, obviously, but this is just an idea to build the, the layout as it is. Um, we, I've been using this, uh, the, this exact file as the starter point for myself, and it's super useful. Uh, so let me show you another file, another example where I've been using it, and it's also a sneak peek of something else that's coming up for us. So these were all layouts that were built uh, using Miratone Figma. So you can see here the same set of components on, on the main file. I just started adding a bunch of pages over time. Um, here I'm breaking a, a little bit some of the conventions just to stretch the direction, um, but these will also serve as templates very soon. So the idea is that you will be provided not only with the foundations, the colors, and the typography and the components, but also templates that arrange the components together and give you patterns on how to design for onboarding, how to design for authentication, how to design for search, and all of that. It's still a work in progress, but we have to hope to have some of these pieces up very soon. Um, so this was the overview of Miratone UI. Uh, to keep in touch with changes uh, that, that we do here, of course, keep an eye on the Discord channel. 
if we go to the to the Figma community file, let me go back to Mirror Tone and go from there. So if you head to the developer community, we have had an initial post that was made there with the, um, the initial set of components, but there is also a secondary thread there that is a change log for the project. Uh, so the idea is that anyone can subscribe to this post and whenever we post a new update, you receive an email letting you know that there's a new version to download. That's because uh, due to a limitation in Figma's community, um, once you copy this file, it will not get automatic updates, unfortunately. So to get new updates, you're gonna have to come in here and then copy this file again. You don't have to do that um, because like it doesn't change that fast. Uh, but especially when we do major changes where we add uh, components, it's always good to, to get a new copy. Uh, so keep an eye on, on Discord or subscribe to this um, this thread on the Mirror community. Uh, will and I will share the links on the Discord channel as well, too, so you don't lose anything. Um, and I think that's it.